Hi folks, <clears throat> thanks for tuning in to my YouTube channel. My name is Joe Patterson. I want to welcome you. I'd like to visit with you as I'm on my way home. I'd like to talk with you about issues that make people run. <clears throat> that is something that uh, over the years that I have learned from the Holy Spirit, these same issues used to make me run at one time uh, because they're hard sayings and they're hard teachings and they're really nothing more than the teachings of Christ Jesus our Lord but most people haven't heard them and I've even had people say oh I've never read that where is that <clears throat> and it's in the word so if I tell you I'm quoting a scripture I am <clears throat> I usually read the King James Version but I also have read for years the New International Version. I have looked into the English Standard Version. I, there are just all kinds of versions of the Bible that I have read over the years. And I think uh, I, I do a New King James Version, Old King James. So I'm not a, opposed to really any of these versions. Um, so I'm going to be quoting Scripture. And you'll be welcome to look them up if you would like and Google the scripture and it usually will bring you right in the Bible where it's at. I do not memorize book, chapter, verse anymore. I have learned with the Lord that is not important. The Lord Jesus did not quote book, chapter, verse. <clears throat> he may have told you he was reading out of the book of Isaiah. I can tell you that much when I quote the word, but it's not that important either because the man who wrote Hebrew says, for somewhere in scripture it says, so there you go. Anyway, Issues that make people run. Issues that people are afraid of. Let's talk about those. <clears throat> Self-defense is a very big issue. Causes a lot of problems with people who claim to love God. I'm not afraid to talk about it. I talk about it all the time on my channel. Self-defense. Killing. What does Jesus say to do with our enemies? I try to break it down to you like I like the Lord has broken down for me <clears throat> I have pondered it I have meditated on it before the Lord I have asked the Lord I can see his teachings I not only can see what he said I can also see what he did I can also see what those who followed after him called apostles disciples of Christ what they did and what they said <clears throat> that's how I base the understanding that the Holy Spirit gives me to see that it is God. It isn't just what some would say, well, you take it out of context, Joe. Okay, you want to wrestle with context teaching all your life, you're welcome to do it. I believe in correctly dividing the Word of God, and you're going to do that anytime you line up what was said with what was done. All right, so we know self-defense was not taught by our Lord Jesus. It was not taught that you have a God-given right to defend yourself. If somebody breaks in your home or whatever, you got a right to kill them. you got a right to take... You can do whatever you want to do, but I'm going to stick with what Jesus says to do. When someone does evil to you, I'm going to stick with what Jesus says to do to them. Okay, <clears throat> so he didn't say to kill them. He didn't say to shoot them with a gun. He didn't say to arm yourself with a gun. <laughs> These are issues that people want to run from. Another issue is people will say, well, Joe, Jesus said, told him to get swords. I know. If you'll read the word and correctly divide it, you'll understand why. So the scripture tells why. They had to be numbered amongst the transgressors. People that were armed and armed themselves, like Barabbas, for instance, was come, and zealots, zealots were against the Roman government and tried to uh, train to fight and kill Roman soldiers. So that would be transgressors according to the Roman laws. Anyone that's armed or, or speaking against the kingdom of Rome and the, and the way of Rome. <clears throat> and when you arm yourselves, you become transgressors. That is what Jesus told him. You can think whatever you want, but it agrees with his teachings. It shows whenever Peter tried to use a sword, the Lord told him that's not the way and put the ear back on the man. Nobody carried swords after that. Nobody used swords. And many people were attacked 
Many innocent people were killed. All these things happened to Christ's followers, and yet nobody retaliated wrong for wrong. Nobody returned vengeance. Nobody killed nobody to protect nobody. There you go. It's a simple thing. You can do whatever you want with that. I'm going to stick with that because that is what was said and that is what was done. So the Holy Spirit teaches me that correctly divides the word. <clears throat> Therefore, I know for sure that they were numbered and he was numbered amongst the transgressors as soon as they got swords. He told him to do it so that the prophecy could be fulfilled as much as he told John the Baptist to baptize him. And John says, I have need of being baptized by you, yet you come to me. And he says, do it. It is to fulfill all righteousness. There you go. So, there's one issue. <clears throat> Other issues, of course, are going to be joining the military. People that believe that, you know, that it's okay to join the military if you follow Christ. People that vote. These are other issues, hard issues. People don't like to talk about this because they want to vote and they want a military to support them and to protect them against their enemies, foreign and domestic. So when we talk about these things and I try to share with people, what did the Lord say? Where did his government, where is God's government? Where is the government of Jesus? Where did he say it was? Who did he say was the God of this world is another hard issue. People don't like to believe that the God of this world is Satan the devil and that everybody in the world is under the control of the devil. Therefore, Jesus says, come out of the world, be ye separate, dwell here as strangers and aliens. You are a peculiar people, a royal priesthood, the Lord says. Therefore, behave that way. Come out of the world, be ye separate. Don't get involved with the affairs of this world. Another issue. Do not love the world or the things in it. Jesus taught by the Holy Spirit in the book of 1 John. <clears throat> Jesus is the spirit of truth, by the way. So anytime anyone speaks by that spirit of truth, it is the Lord teaching. Okay. Do not love the world or anything in it. People don't understand that. Lest you hate your father, mother, brother, sister, all that from his sake, you're not worthy of him. Lest you love your father and brother and sister and mother and all that, you, you have to love God more than all of them or you're not worthy of him. These are all, again, issues that people don't like to bring up. People don't like to talk about. If you claim to love God, and yet you hate your neighbor or you despise your neighbor. Most people don't want to admit that they hate. They want to say, well, I just don't like them. I just can't stand them. Okay, but that's what God calls hate. God says if you do that and you claim that you love him, you are a liar. Again, hard, hard issues, hard sayings. People do not understand these issues, these are hard sayings, that the way is narrow, and few there be that will find it, the Lord says. Few there be that will find the way that leads to eternal life. Nobody wants to talk about that. It's a hard matter, a hard issue. <clears throat> Speaking in tongues and learning uh, the proper balance and understanding of those things. Tithing, again, these are hard issues. Churches need a tithe. They can't afford to have you giving what you decided in your own heart to give. They need the tithe because the tithe represents a tenth of your gross income. And that's what they need to support their buildings, to pay their bills, and to pay their staff. So th these are, again, hard issues. People don't like to talk about churches being set up like businesses. 501c3s where they are a corporate, a corporation. They don't want to talk about that because it's too much like the world. It's too much like business. Business doesn't have God's business in mind. It has its own business in mind. <clears throat> For the sake of governmental influence, taxes, and, and, and government deciding what's hate speech and what isn't when it comes to teaching the way of the Lord. Teaching that a, that a man shouldn't marry a man nor a woman should marry a woman. Again, these are hard issues. People don't like to talk about these things when it come, because they're afraid of these issues. They may have people in their family that are gay or lesbian or, or transgender or, you know, wanting to marry. Or you have fornicators in your family. People that are, have been living, you know, your son has been living with his girlfriend for years. And you say, oh, well, they're married. But they've never de declared marriage. They've never done it in the way that is upright to where everybody knows that they are husband and wife. <clears throat> so that is what God has called us to do. 
if you're going to have relations, that you should marry. The woman should take on your name, man. And you're now, the two have become one. It's no longer you and your name, your last name different than her. The name becomes the same. You're one flesh. Anyway, <clears throat> again, hard matters. Suicide. Again, hard issues. People run from these kind of things. They don't want to talk about suicide. They don't want to consider suicide being murder. But you murdered. You took your own life. You killed yourself. What happens to people who kill themselves? What does the word say? Where's the example? What happened to Judas Iscariot? What happened to Saul of Tarsus when he threw himself on his sword and took his own life? What happens? What does God say? Anyone who destroys the temple, their temple, you, their soul is destroyed. That's what the Lord says, not me. Look it up in the scripture. Okay, so these again are hard issues. I'm talking about many things that most churches will not talk about because they know it's going to cause a row. They're going to lose people. They don't care if it's God's business. They don't care if people are suffering because they're disobeying the message. <clears throat> they they want to believe that you're it's honorable to serve this country in its military. It's honorable to do your duty, to be a patriot and be a Christian. It's honorable to be a Mason or to be whatever, Freemason or whatever other kind of thing. You know, Knights Templar and, and, and Shriner and all that stuff is highly honorable. But they don't want to hear the truth of the matter. They run from these matters because it's woven in their family. It's woven in their lives. They don't want to talk about divorce because they've been divorced or their parents got divorced or their grandparents got divorced for reasons other than what God approves. They don't want to think that they're adulterers and adulteresses. These are hard matters. Everybody wants to think their kids are okay when they're not okay, when their children are not serving God. They don't want to be a fruit examination. Most people don't want to talk about examining yourselves to see that you're of the faith. They don't want to talk about the fruit of the Spirit and making sure it's being born in you. They don't want to talk about any of these matters. They don't want to talk about being faithful to the end. They don't want to talk about overcoming evil by doing good. Because what they have received is a gospel that tells you that Jesus Christ died on a cross and rose to life and now sits at the right hand of the Father so you could remain who you are and still go to heaven. They don't want to talk about dying to self. They don't want to talk about being born again or being transformed by the renewing of your mind. These are hard issues because most people have not been transformed. <clears throat> they think they'll inherit the kingdom of God while they are still loving the world and the things in it. These are the truths, folks. Just the few things that I've said are just a few hard things, things that we talk about often in our fellowship to make certain that we are not tricked by Satan's cunning. That we are not following the devil while all along we thought we were following Christ. They don't want to talk about where Jesus comes and he says, Many of you will come to me in that great day of judgment. Many of you will come to me and you'll say, Lord, Lord, did we not do all these things? Did we not follow you? Did we not love you? Did we not do all these things in your name and cast out devils and, and, do, and, and had revelations and all that? And Jesus said, Depart from me, you workers of evil. I never knew you. Nobody wants to talk about that. <clears throat> These are the pure facts. All of the things that I just described to you. People run from these matters. They want to believe that their relationship with God is personal and it's none of your business. So that's like the hand telling the foot, I have no need of you. You're none of your business. What I do in the body is private. You don't need to know what I'm doing. So you don't understand that none of us are separate of each other, but all the parts of the body work together in Christ. Christ being the head. He's the thinker. He is the one that is upright before God. He's the one that never sinned. He's the one that's innocent. His blood is what was worthy. Most people don't want to talk about the blood or communion. 
and what you're doing. They don't want to talk about wine and, and, and grape juice and which was it, grape juice or wine, or, you know, is it wrong to drink? Is it wrong to, nobody wants to think about it. Is it wrong to smoke? Where does cancer come from? Again, these are hard issues, issues that people run from. Where do storms come from? Did the devil send the tornado? Did the devil make it flood? Did the devil make the wind blow so hard and a fire happen in the mountains? And the devil did that, burned up this whole town, right? People say, <clears throat> did the devil cause cancer to come? Oh, look at the devil's attacking him with cancer and, and, and sickness and disease and famine. Did the devil cause all that? That's what they want to believe. So nobody wants to hear many times the truth on these matters. Yet all of these matters I have described to you so far have a pure truth in the Holy Ghost and the Holy Word of God. Nobody wants to talk about issues like how many books were in the Bible. They think, well, the 66 books is all we ever had. But that's not true. There are many more books in the Bible. Those that were taken and removed. For what reason? I can't tell you I know the reason. I just know it couldn't be good. What a good reason. So I've read many of the other books that were taken out, and I'm thankful for them. But people are afraid. They're, they're trained by, by, by men and tradition, and this is a traditional Bible. But I say it wasn't a traditional Bible before they removed those books. The traditional Bible before they removed those books had those books in it. <clears throat> they don't want to talk hard issues. Again, the book of Enoch. Nobody wants to talk about the book of Enoch or the Gospel of Thomas. Nobody wants to talk about these books because to them, they're not acceptable. Nobody else has them. I don't want to be weird. I don't want to be strange. I mean, they'll think I'm a flake. Or I'm a Gnostic. You're, you're Gnostic. You're Gnosticism. All these things. But yet our brother Jude in the Holy Scriptures that you do have, he quotes the book of Enoch. He quotes Enoch. Somebody read his book. Anyway, these are the truths. Nobody wants to talk about demons. They're hard issues. Many people don't want to talk about sex. They don't want to talk about sodomy. They don't want to talk about, is it wrong to have oral sex and anal sex? They want to believe that everything in the marriage bed is private and none of your business. And it's okay to do whatever the marriage bed to find to do is fine as long as it's with your wife or your husband. They don't want to talk about the other. It's hard issues. They don't want to talk about rebellious children, children and disrespectful children and what that looks like. Because it, it hurt. They don't want to talk about it. They're not ready. They love their children many times more than they love the Lord or more than they love the truth. And they don't want those hard issues to deal with because they don't know how to fix them. They don't want to talk about money. Don't want to talk about storing up and, and money saved big for retirement and all that kind of stuff. They don't want to talk about rich. They don't want to hear about what God says to the rich people. They don't want to talk about poor people. They don't want to talk about God being the maker of good times and bad. Everything I'm telling you folks is in the Word. I know it sounds lengthy and all that, but you've got to get this understanding. These are all hard issues. What made them hard was that nobody is telling you these things from the beginning. Every church wants to open up John 3.16 and read the story about Jesus, God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believe it upon Him shall have everlasting life. That's a quick quote of that, of that scripture. <clears throat> You've got to understand that there are many things in the word of the Lord that you have not been taught by preachers and teachers at church because they're hard issues and they're petrified they're going to lose their people if they lose their people most of the preachers get fired the board gets together and they get rid of the preacher because they can't let the building and the land go back to wherever it would go they're going to lose it they'll lose it if they can't pay for it and nobody wants to pay out of their own pocket they want help from the mass to pay Help from the numbers to pay. So they want numbers in their church more than they want quality of spiritual growth. They want numbers. <clears throat> that way they can show that their church is growing. They want a big youth a youth uh, people. That way the church can grow and last. You'll die off and it's still going because your young people are taking over. All of these things, again, are hard issues. Should we have contemporary songs or hymnals from old times? Hard issues. I pray that you can hear this. These are these are pure facts, folks. So when you listen to my channel, you're going to hear me deal with every single one of those issues because those have come up 
to my own heart before the Lord, where I've asked the Lord to teach me on these matters. And my question to you is, have you? <clears throat> have you asked God to show you what is offensive to him and what is not offensive to him? What is backed up in the word of the Lord? Anyway, hope you can hear it. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I hope you'll come to understand how beautiful the Lord is and that we can share agreement. Unity is another hard issue. People believe that it's okay to agree to disagree. Another hard issue. I do not believe it's okay. Many people do. I believe it is absolutely exactly the opposite of what Jesus teaches and how he lived. All right. So, again, on my channel, that's the things that you're going to be hearing and dealing with. So, if you're new to my channel, welcome. These are the things we talk about because the doctrine of Christ, it is so important that we abide in it. People stumble because they disobey the message of Christ Jesus. Till next time. Thanks for tuning in.